Uh, here we go. Here's the blood covenant maps that we uh, <laughs> that we've got here. <laughs> Uh, Blood, Covenant, uh, Veil, Corrupted Keep, Molten Falls, Awoken, and Blood Run. I like that straight away. Rafa, of course, knows about the clutch. Even he's a little bit worried about what he could do. But the last time Razy used a clutch against Rafa, Rafa pretty much stomped him at that point. But he doesn't seem to be too confident this time round, which is perfectly understandable. The real question is how much fuel left in the tank does Razy have? He's been in the loser bracket since day one, played a ridiculous amount of maps and matches going into this. And I'm sure he still does, but it depends on the circumstances on how these first few maps Maps go. But I mean, looking at these uh, picks here, I, I do believe the titles are correct. Obviously, we'll find out sure. Um, but I'm actually mostly looking at the champions themselves. Blood Covenant with the Athena and the Nyx. And then on the Awoken, I can only assume they've been swapped. But then we have Doom Slayer and Death Knight. So if we're looking at champions, they make a lot more sense the way things currently are. We are going to see a little bit of Death Knight later on. I know Death Knight is not the most meta champion out there, but in this kind of situation where there's more maps to go through, right. um, you know, this is where he becomes a little bit more attractive because he's kind of all that's left. But he can work on the small maps, which is why he gets picked on Awoken. And you're also going to see more of these interesting matchups the further down the maps, of course, you end up going, right? Best of seven means that you kind of have to work with what you've got towards the end. Most of the champs who already have been removed from the pool by the time you arrive at Blood Run. So that's also going to be an interesting matchup if we get to that point. Slash versus the Keel. Looking at Razy and Rafa's picks, I think they're overall pretty balanced. Nothing that really puts an advantage one way or another, in my opinion. But Razy, I think one of the things he has to look out for is that if he does get into the groove of things, he doesn't get overly confident. We saw that a few times against the Hang, we saw it against Wenger. Once he starts hitting these shots, he tends to put himself in these dangerous positions. And if he does so, looking at these map and champion picks, things can go so wrong so quickly against the master of the game that is Rafa. I think there's only two maps I think Rafa would wanted banned either Ruins. I think there was one other one, but at least Ruins has been banned straight away. He's gonna be happy with that. I know it's only one ban, but like you know, if the finals goes to full three or anything like that, then that one map could have saved his bacon pretty much. We'll have to see how it goes out. But during the first few maps, it does look like it favours Rafa on numerous occasions and numerous reasons as to why. But the problem is for Razy, Rafa can adapt so easily to any opponent. He's been doing it for so many years now. He's probably one of the best adaptable duelists on the circuit. Like, for example, in the Americas, he's gone 32 and 0 in the space of a year, Americas alone. But of course, this is Razy. We know how good he is. We're glad that he's at back to his full potential again, but he does not want a repeat of the Stage 2 finals. I mean, just... Yeah. Just hearing it like that puts it in a whole different perspective, you know? Like, you see Rafa win pretty much every single weekly, but now to hear 32 wins, zero losses, just incredible. Yeah, and I mean, there's a lot to say about, uh, right, with the legacy with Rafa is that he's been in the situation before. High pressure, tournament game, at LAN, online, etc. Whereas we all know that Razy is completely capable of being a champion. Of course, there's still that hurdle of winning and grabbing and clenching your first one. Certainly a tough matchup, but I do believe Razy has proved that he is someone that could do it. And uh, it's, it sounds like we are uh, going to be hopping into this game. So, gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to be joining with uh, ZSX to cast this uh, grand final here. Uh, are you there? You with I, me? I am, I am here. I am here. Can you hear me? Excellent. I can hear you. Great. How you doing, man? I'm doing, I'm doing so, so good. Uh, nothing makes me more exciting than watching high-level Quake like this. And uh, this is... Uh, this is certainly going to be a treat right here. Yeah, I'm sure this will be up there with the many great finals you've casted. So let's hope it goes the full duration as we do start with the Raptors Poppy, who has the Athena and Razy has that Nyx. Yeah, and I really do hope that that, that is the case. Uh, you know, uh, we've already seen some absolutely phenomenal games this weekend. And hold on, we got a first fight over by the heavy and blasting up those stairs, but caught in the stream of Rafa's LG. The first frag will go to Rafa. He gets a chance to set the pace here on Blood Covenant.
Yeah, I think Razy went down to grab some information to see what his opponent was up to, and in doing so, just that slight overstepping and greedy play from Razy cost him on both major items. Rapper has the high ground, he has the weapon advantage. Razy's gonna have to dodge for his life because he did not use that Ghost Walk for the first frag, so that was the only benefit to come out of that bad situation. And Rapper now has a full map locked down. Razy did go aggressive with that Ghost Walk, and it's not gonna pay out as he did pick up that item. He's very, very low. Rapper can't get that frag, but has done enough to stall any further advances. Yeah, that was uh, unfortunate. It looked like he was going to pick that one up, and uh, Razy did do some good damage versus Rafa, but Rafa's right back in rotation waiting for that Mega, and we'll begin to head over to the Heavy. Uh, not really sure what, uh, you know, I haven't seen if, if Razy did grab himself a rail yet. I assume that he's uh, equipped across the board right now. Uh, but 1-0, to zero, well into this game. A lot of uh, match to go here. And, uh, oh, we might have another, oh nice. my god, that was beautiful, rail up the jump pad. Caught him off the spawn as well. Razy does get the nice little jump, but those hooks are there. Rafa's going to chase him down. Will Razy even pop the Ghost Walk? I think he has and will be away for now. But just look what he's left with. Razy is just struggling at all turns as Rafa has been relatively unscathed for this whole match. And whilst he may have been equipped before, he isn't now. And Rafa's found him at that jump pad. And Razy once again is just scuttling away for his life. And this doesn't look good so far. Yeah, I mean, the pressure that Rafa's putting on right now is, is certainly solid. And that doesn't mean that the tides can't turn, right? It's just a, a matter of Razy finding an opportunity to take away that stack, to get that frag, and then, you know, figure out how he can find some control in this map. But so far, uh, Rafa has solid, solid grasp of what's going on in this game. Fight near the railgun as well. And uh, that's going to have Razy running away again. I mean, Rafa's hitting some pot shots. Razy is getting in a little bit of damage. But Rafa's, I mean, with that mobility that he's got uh, with Athena is just top notch here. We just look at the tempo of the game and for all the great qualities of Razy, I mean, no player is particularly good when running away without anything to their name. Yeah. And Rafa's just doing such an amazing job of keeping that pressure up, keeping that tempo high and blocking off all the routes for Razy to make a comeback. And you can see that Razy, somebody who is so proactive, is just hiding under the, the maps and the catacombs at the moment because he has nothing to work with and he doesn't know what to do. But he's established some basic stack, as you would say now, hopefully has a rail, has the ghost walk. So we might see some pot shots coming from from Razy's side as he's moved over to the mega side of the map. I think Rafa has an idea where he might be. Rafa can't see that outline, but we can, and he does get a pop off on him. And it's it's those types of things, like that one rocket that could single-handedly put Razy back a little bit more. Again, still in a position where he could do something in this game, but Rafa is being very impressive with his control. Sure. For all the credit that Rafa deserves at this point in time, it is only two to zero. And yep. as he makes the move up onto the top, he will be taking Razy down again as he overstays his welcome. Um, but a key point to note is Rafa, they are both to one uh, playing a light champion. So even though Rafa has so much control, a single rail can even up the stacks if Razy can get that basic starting stack up to scratch. Yeah, just like that one that we saw there and put a couple together and that can change the tide of the game. We're gonna have a battle over here by the heavy. LG comes out, uh, there's that rail that gets hit and Rafa's gonna be forced to run down to 60 points of health. Wick we'll pick up a 25. It's gonna head over to the mega and we will have a small battle here as, uh, well, it looks like nice. Razy is going to get it. And Razy's got himself on the board in terms of an advantage. He's now been, been able to pick up this Mega. He should know roughly the timing for that Heavy as well. And he has the Ghost Walk to work with. He might even go aggressive with it because he's got Rafa. Back-to-back nice. -back rails gets himself on the board after four minutes. And that, that's exactly what you said, you know, finding those shots. He finally hit those rails. First set didn't really do anything. Second set had Rafa running, and that gave him the opportunity to do what he needed to do. Ghost Walk comes out yet again, try to get position. And uh, unfortunately uh, for Razy, Rafa is going to just be sneaking away. But this is it. This is the table's turn. Three to one, two frag deficit for Razy. But this is where he wanted to be. You mentioned him hiding out earlier. Well, now he gets to go on the hunt a little bit. Controlling this rail now, right? He's just fragged Rafa is going to be paramount because the rail plays such a massive role in any level of duel, particularly in a light versus light, because it is that ranged weapon that can create these opportunities to push in. And obviously with the grapple, Rafa can do that. So if Razy can control that weapon, it does look like Rafa's seen his opportunity. He will have a rail now. So that strategy is gone. And Razy needs to play a little bit more careful than he was before. And we're going to have Razy waiting now for the mega. 
Goes out perfect, but Rafa setting up a little bit of a trap, waiting on the upper levels near the rocket launcher. He's gonna head back over though, Ghost Walk to make a strategic move into the heavy room. Grabs that heavy, will get hit by a rail from up above, but that just puts him back a little bit here. He still has timing, still has the opportunity to grab some control. Try both wow. to come out. I think he's gonna chase on this one, and a beautiful shotgun, and I, I mean, man, I'm telling you, it's terrifying in his hands. 100%, and it's actually such a valid point because there's probably no one better, as you said on the panel, we, the, than Razy. Using that super shotgun in the close range, and again, against lights, it's just devastating. Rafa felt the full force there, and we didn't get a lot of time to speak about the tactics of Razy, but I do think he needs to take the advantage to push against Rafa. Rafa loves to be the one to be proactive, but if Razy can continue this momentum, he's, he's slowly clawing himself back into this game. Rafa's stolen away heavy, but Razy's the one with the momentum at this point in time. And an aggressive ghost will quite like this. Rafa will have no idea of what's going on. Yeah, he's going to pop back out near the railgun. He sees him again just out of the corner of his eyes. It launches a few rockets that way. Or dodged all by Rafa. But here the LGs come out on the top of the bridge. And Razy is forced to back off on that. Rafa really getting the better of that exchange. Rails do come out. Razy down to 12 points of health and a shotgun to follow up, making it 4-2. to two. That is the issue, the very best, a slight overstepping of the mark in terms of Razy. He got out of position, he lost the heavy, and he'll go down again for an easy frag. That was not the play he wanted. And that stabilization has quickly gone to Ray Rafa. Knows he's got an opportunity here to at least force the Ghost Walk, which is what he wants to do, making his way up to the heavy. Razy will stick around with the shotgun, but it's not enough. He stole the item, but he didn't do any damage. Yeah, and uh, down an additional frag as well. Rafa knows exactly where he is. He double backs through that teleporter and said, nope, wrong, wrong way. And we'll head over to the Mega. So, you know, 6-2, we talked about, right, the, the pacing a little bit of this game. And again, uh, Rafa now finding his flow once again, grabbing the Mega will make his way over to Heavy. Uh, still not out of it. There's a nice rail coming from Rafa and uh, doing the same thing basically Razy did to him, which is trying to deny him these weapons that could put him back in a position to score more frags and potentially tie it up. And it's a tough ask for Razy now. We're just approaching the two minute mark. And Razy has shown signs of life, but Rafa quickly shut that down and it's consolidated the lead. There's a, a big split between both major items, 10 seconds. And Rafa will focus on keeping a lockdown of these, just peppering away at Razy so he doesn't feel confident in making a move. As long as he does that, like another Ghost Walk is gone, Rafa feels safe. She's going to back off. He knows Razy's on the high ground. Yep, Tribal's coming out. Uh, it does uh, exchange a rail there, too. And now Rafa making his way over. And I just, I, I have to say again, you know, like Razy, considering how long he has been playing uh, sort of Arena FPS and Quake Champions being his first big game, uh, he's still just so impressive, especially when you think about the thousands and thousands and thousands of hours that Rafa has in this game. Uh, but Rafa is, uh, it does grab another frag for the lead seven to two now. Oh, wow. Less minutes left to go. Wow, indeed. And that is going to be the final nail in the coffin if it wasn't bolted already because six frags against Rafa and this little time isn't enough and there'll be another one just to clean up for good measure. Uh, no. Nope. Sorry, carry on. Well, I was going to ask, you know, uh, Rafa going through the winner's bracket does get that one map advantage. Yep. And that's already, you know, that feels good, right? But, like, what feels even better? Hey, a two-map advantage here <laughs> in the grand finals. Um, you know, certainly puts a little bit more pressure on Razy. It does. We'll be moving on to Razy's server, which will definitely help, given how important Razy's aim, Razy's aim will be in this encounter. And... They'll need to come back fighting because going down three, now that's a, a mighty tall order, yeah. That'd be yeah. four in a row, he'll need to overcome Rafa at that point. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a, a scary position to be thinking about. But, you know, I feel like we got a chance to talk to both Razy and Rafa today. And, uh, you know, Razy very much just the, I've got to play the game that I've got to play. Didn't necessarily have an answer for exactly how he's going to take out Rafa, but I think that just goes to show the immense amount of respect that he has towards Rafa and his game. And, of course, just what he needs to do to win, potentially, this Grand Finals. Sure. And Rafa's shown what a champion he is, and 
how perfect you need to play to overcome him. Razy made two pivotal oversteps in that match that cost him the game, essentially. That opening frag where he got slightly too greedy to try and get some extra information off the spawn, and Raph was already in his face. Um, Razy underestimated the power of Athena. And then that second one, when Razy had wrangled back control, a couple of frags, I think it was four to two, um, and Razy just got slightly greedy, jumping across the map to try and hit a rail instead of consolidating the heavy. And Rafa capitalized upon that, took the heavy away, and took the game away. So he needs to play a perfect game to beat Rafa, and he is capable of that. Absolutely. And I, I just have to make a mention that the last couple of matches, the uh, replays that we've seen, they could just be standalone frag movies. Like, they're, <laughs> they're all just gorgeous and beautiful uh, and insane frags. Uh, that one right there, very, very nice. And that means we are going to be moving on to Vale, where Rafa is going to be playing as Sorlag and uh, Galena is going to be coming out for Razy. So Vale is a quite a combat intensive map. We have the, the close proximity of the heavy and the mega. Um, the strategy with Galena is going to be to try and dominate the high ground, particularly through that telly. You're always going to get some free damage with your totems. Um, you want to try and build the totem the totem's up so you get that overstack, whereas Rafa, as he spoke about extensively earlier, if you're going to pick Sorlag, like, you want to go fast, you want to use her speed, her air control to try and bully your opponent and just have an overbearing stack. And if I'm honest, I, I do think Rafa's going to be fairly more comfortable in doing that um, just because Razy needs to force the issue and when you've got a Sorlag like, flying at you with a max stack, it's quite hard to hold your ground. Yeah, it could be a little bit uh, scary seeing her come uh, your way. And, uh, you know, the Galena, obviously a champion that uh, Razy's super comfortable on. We've yep. seen him using Galena throughout the entire tournament uh, and to, to, to great success as well. Is that enough to just uh, go up against uh, Rafa? Well, obviously the game will answer that for us. But I, I do agree that it's it's not just as simple uh, given the fact that Sorlog's coming out for Rafa. And that puts him two games up. Just a reminder, because Rafa did fight through that winner's bracket, he starts this grand finals with a game one. And, uh, you know, it's just that much closer to victory. Um, and then also with the belt, uh, maybe you can explain if, if Rafa wins, how this will uh, how this will play out. But if Rafa wins, he, he takes having the belt. He'll be a two-time. He will be tied with Kilson in terms of uh, stage victories, but having won this stage, the World Championship, it does count for slightly more in terms of the points and standings and it will make Rafa our ultimate champion. If somehow Razy does turn this around and walks away with the championship, it will be Kilsen as our two-time champion that will go get that belt to take home. Here we go, Vale is coming up next. I'm excited to, to watch this one. We saw some great games out of Razy earlier on Vale, and uh, the GLHFs come out. I'd like to see that sportsmanship, and here we go, we are live. So the key for me is how effective can Razy be at the range game, that mid to range game, keeping Rafa away. Rafa wants to close the gap on Razy, and Razy's positional play has to be perfect. He's to hit his rails early, he's to be doing damage with his rocket spam and his lightning gun, and he's to keep backing off to try and restrict Rafa from picking that tempo up. If he can do that, that's when he's got the biggest shot in this game. How, how important would you say that Spit is in this particular map for Rafa in terms of just controlling various areas? Well, I think you see it right there. You yeah. see the heavy come up, the Spit comes out. You know that if you're going to run into an area, you're going to take some Spit and some ticking damage, which then, if you want to take the engagement, will continue to mount. One of the good things about Galena is popping that totem, if you can do it, will then nullify that. So it is somewhat of a pseudo counter in that respect, sure. but it's it's so limited in that. That's just a theory point. The fact that if you're going to take Spit in combat, you're generally taking Spit for whatever the, whatever the duration that combat's going to be. Sure. So we've started off this first minute somewhat somewhat slow and to be expected. I think both players kind of feeling one another out, um, but it, it's, it's very possible we could go a little further. We got Rafa setting up a little bit of a trap, and uh, Razy takes a little bit of damage, but uh, Rafa as well. And now a fight over the heavy. The heavy and the mega health are very, very close in time. But as you mentioned, Mike, nice. Mike I, where, I didn't even see where that from <laughs> underneath, from underneath, yeah. And he catches him off the spawn, and Razy didn't take any damage. So this is key. Against heavy champions, they will st they will spawn with a heavier stack, and so they have the possibility to keep the pressure on and try and refrag you. And so, it, whilst you're in a 
a solid and confident position, having taken a frag. It is actually one of the most vulnerable times of matches. Razy finds his opponent on the low ground once again and pushes in. He's also got time to go up to the high ground, quickly taking the rocket jump route, picking up Rafa, bouncing him around, but he did land onto that item and goes away very healthy. He'll keep the pressure on. You see the speed of the Sword coming through, and that's the pressure we're talking about. Like, gets killed, but rushes back in. And once again, the pressure is there. He's so healthy, he's so stacked. And what was a nice lead, it's already tied up. And that's what can happen here on Vale. It started off slow, but the moment that the package was opened, uh, it was a, it was a free-for-all there on the speed. And now things have certainly picked up. The pace uh, is uh, becoming more and more chaotic here, which is what we like to see in Quake Champions. But Razy still sitting with the Mega Health and uh, a better armor stack. Uh, Rafa now kind of fighting to get back into position. Up that jump pack comes Razy. Rafa's waiting for it. Wow. Hits a nice LG, but the rails exchange, and Razy walks out of there with just the under 50 health. Yeah, he knew Rafa was semi-vulnerable, but not enough to go up a jump pad against the world champion. So you need to semi-retaliate. And that was the, the totem placement through the teleporter we're talking about. You're nearly always going to get some bonus damage. As Racy does feel confident to push in here. He's bullying Rafa from that longer range with the lightning gun. He's picked up the mega, but Rafa is winning this exchange with the rockets. He will be also dropping down, surprising Razy. And luckily, Sorlak doesn't take acid damage, otherwise he would be dead. They're both very low. Rafa's available, but... He's also shot gunnable as Razy takes the initiative once more. Yeah, I and that's what I would be almost, uh, you know, more scared of at that point in time. Uh, certainly lots of health to go around and collect here, but uh, Razy knew exactly where Rafa was and cleaned that up very, very nicely. He's now up by one frag. Uh, lots of time still left on this block. And here we go, more shotgun pellets being rained down on top of Rafa. And he does manage to pick up uh, yet another frag. And this is nice, and he's doing exactly what we said. We, he's playing the rail game so well. Rafa, you can see the urgency that's coming out from the American. He wants to close the gap. But at the minute, Razy's being careful and using his audio cues well, but this is an overcommittal. Rafa's got position on the heavy. Razy will be going down, and he wanted to hit an extra rail. It's just not in time, and that's the danger. The pressure is always there. If you miss a single rail, Rafa's there to kill you for it. Yeah, and uh, I, I do feel like overcommitment is something that can come pretty easily here on this particular map. Just just given the layout and the size, etc. Um, and at some point, you've got to take risks, right? Like uh, some of the best Quake players in the game, they do take risks, but they don't always pay off. Uh, in a high profile a grand final matchup like that, you might take less risks, but uh, you know, these are great players, right? They will do things that we will only dream of doing. And another great follow up frag dropping down from above, almost every beat of that lightning gun hitting his opponent. We're tied up now, 4 4. And it's turned around so quickly. It feels like Razor needs to put in exponential amounts of effort to even get a single frag. And as soon as there's a, the minutiae of mistakes from Razor, Raph has got another two frags to his name. So it's difficult to go up against the sore leg. The speed and the stack is, is overbearing. And on a map like Veil, you can always force the initiative. We've got Heavy picked up by Rafa, he's going to make his way over, finds uh, Razy yet again, LG coming out, and I feel like LG's kind of been weapon of choice here, and a suicide coming out from Razy, Rafa just so stacked that the rocket up close uh, does enough damage to take away that frag and give Rafa the lead, not the way that Razy wanted to give up the lead. Not at all, and it's at a point now where Raph is nearly reaching critical mass. He's in position for this heavy. Razy's nowhere to be seen. He might get in for a little bit of chip damage here, and he does, but if he sticks around, he's bound to die, and it looks like he's overcommitted once again. The totem's there, but at what cost? He has caught Rafa, though, so it is actually much better than it could have been. It's still not enough, though, as Rafa now can retreat onto this mega and once again regain that stack. And Whilst Razy is delaying that critical mass point of max stack for Rafa, he's losing frags. I mean, what do you, you know, what do you think he, he does in that situation? Just like back up and choose a, a better battlefield to, to go at it, right? I mean, yeah. at some point you know you're you're giving Rafa the game if you just let him take away uh, the heavy and the mega, but. I mean, you've just asked the eternal question of how to play on the defense. <laughs> like, like it's, it's pick your poison. Um, you have to make yourself felt, you have to have a presence, but it's finding that balance of being able, and this is why players like Cypher and the greats of the game are the greats of the game, because they know how to, to 
and manage unreturned damage. It's, it's going in, it's dealing damage, it's getting out unscathed, and it's finding that balance of a full committal and just being able to chip away at your opponent. Yeah, I mean, thinking uh, 10, 15 steps ahead is certainly a, a big part of that, too. Knowing what you can and cannot do, what risks you can take. Another fight here at the heavy. It seems to be a... a uh, an area of a lot of action nice. uh, forced by Razy. Great traded rails right there. Mega's back up now. And, uh, you know, there's still still just three frags. Like, this is it's absolutely doable at this point. But uh, Rafa just, he's had lockdown most of the map. It is three frags, but the, the difficulty is, is that the frags have to be clean from Razy because if one comes enough, away, yeah. it's a little bit scrappy. We've seen how that story goes. Rafa respawns, he presses W, and before you know it, you've got a, you've got the lizard spitting in your face. So it's um, this is the challenge for Razy, and that rocket doesn't help. He does walk over the totem, but he's not going to survive. He might pick up this mega, but he's still walking away with his tail between his legs. He even needs a rail for his troubles, and Rafa does finish Razy off relatively cleanly. Yeah. Uh... And unfortunate that was that mega was pretty much negated with that rail uh, did save his life but uh, there was going to be another one as we picked up two more frags uh, from Rafa off of the last two spawns it looks like there might be a third one coming out here some great rockets and good reads coming out by Rafa and it just doesn't matter where Razy goes whatever escape path he's going for it seems like Rafa's right on top of him and you can feel the desperation coming out from Razy it's like he's Pouring his way, trying to find an in, but there are no cracks in the armor of Rafa now. As you say, that momentum is unbearable. There was a period of time where Razy was very much in this, but it was slowly taken away, ever so cruelly by Rafa. And he's marching towards his victory now. Yep, 10-3 now. Uh, and look at how quickly things can change from a, this is a winnable game with three yep. minutes to go to like, this one is probably over and puts Rafa in uh, what I would call just a commanding lead here in the grand finals uh, with a potential third map win uh, in addition to the uh, uh, Blood Covenant and then the map that he got from fighting through the low, or upper bracket. Sure, and something that's so incredible about Raph from Quake Champions is just his thought process behind champion selection. There's a lot of players out there that will, will pick a champion for comfort or based on what they think they will play best with in that environment, whereas Rafa feels that he has this 360 view of all the qualities that will make that champion the right choice for that map at this time. And it just, you can just sense that he's on another level in this regard, and that the whole logic of it is just, just that much better than other players at this point in time. Which is pretty impressive too, because it doesn't just come down to the champion itself, it comes down to how each individual player plays exactly. that champion. So, I, you know, like, you're talking about a, a level of, of variable that, you know, right, to, to most people who might just pick up the game and play may not understand and see at the surface, but clearly just based off of the, some of the domination and some of the strategic decision making we're seeing here, that that is absolutely the case. Yeah, for sure. And it, it's based on the opponents and what they pick. And it's all those factors that make it such a difficult task. And you might see wow. some people pick the same champion on the same maps every single time. Whereas Rafa, it's, the versatility is incredible. So this is why he's a prior champion and in pole position to take this world championship as well. Yeah, and I, I mean, even at the highest level of, uh, of Quake, right, you can have uh, great days, you can have a not so awesome day, and you could have, a, you know, a, a terrible day too. And uh, even between two phenomenal players, one great player can still make the other player look like, wait, are they, uh, did they go to sleep on this map? It's just, yeah. you know, I'm still so impressed with what I am seeing out of Razy, but you know, Rafa, who may not have looked at his best in day one and maybe in a little bit of day two, he came knowing it doesn't matter as long as I play how I need to play on the finals day. And I'd argue that Razy is in the exact same spot. I mean, we talked a little bit about the run that, that he made. He defeated Toxic, yeah. he lost to Venger, but then defeated and knocked out Avic, defeated and knocked out Base, defeated and knocked out Cooler. And then today, you know, he, he's gone through a whole nother set of games that has been, you know, equally brutal. And 
And I just have to give it up for her stamina as well. Like, uh, hats off to Razy for that. I mean, that's a question. I mean, I don't know if you have an opinion, but is, is fatigue, is that stamina side of things something that needs to be considered? Because, I mean, I mean, we joked about it in the break, but he's played more games today than I've casted. So, and as you say, that whole lower bracket run, as much as it was somewhat self-inflicted, you might argue, by dropping into that, I don't know, dungeon. Everyone knows how brutal they are. Is it something yeah. that might be playing a factor in this final? I mean, I know in the past people say, well, you can build momentum, you get your confidence from running through the lower bracket. But as you say, it is a grueling task when he's had to come up against the very best players in the world time and time yeah. again. I, you know, I, and I think there's truth to it, right? I, th I think it'd be silly to think that there isn't truth to it, that just like anything else, we all have a set limit of stamina. But I would also argue that every single player comes with their own stamina set. I have seen players that are like, yeah, whatever, hour 16, let's go, <laughs> like, let's do it. I've seen other players say, you know, like they need that time in between uh, games to maybe calm down to like analyze w what you know what what happened and um, you know so it's hard to say because only Razy can can you know answer answer that question um, based off of his performance I would say that his stamina has not depleted to the point that I feel like it has affected what he's been able to do but here we are on on yet another game it's a factor it is and it's one of the advantages of of winning through the winners bracket just as it would be in any other sport whether that is quake or whether that's basketball or football whatever um, that is right one of the advantages of, of winning so yeah I do think that it comes into play is it coming into play now you know probably a little bit because you still get you get tired but you know based off of Razy's previous performances and even if, uh, against his teammate Wenger just last around uh, you know he he did not look like he was lacking stamina in that game you know that uh, point so more of those stories don't lose I mean, That's what I take know, away from that. <laughs> easier said than done because yeah. uh, you tell a Quake player that and they, they might just laugh at you. Uh, it's not that easy, even though we could sit here and say, yeah, just make it through the winner's bracket and then you don't <laughs> have to worry about the stamina problem. It's not necessarily the case, but um, certainly we see this in esports a lot, right? I mean, it, it goes without saying sometimes our, our days can, can last a little bit longer, maybe as a series goes all the way, um, and those mistakes can and, you know, start to build up. And I think that's where ultimately, you know, players have to remain focused. They have to uh, be thinking about the game that's ahead of them. They can't let what happened five games ago be a part of, of mentally what they're carrying and, and their luggage with that. But you know what? Just like I, I said, you've got to focus on the, the game now. And here we are, Corrupted Keep, the game now. And the most important thing we could say here is that Razy has to win to stay alive. He does indeed. Fight. And as much as I say it was his best chance, it is also his last chance because if Rafa is to win this map, he will go up 4-0 and that will be it. He will be our champion. So last chance saloon for Razy, who is on the strong and Pika as a Pika comes out early and fortunately does no damage. Rafa backing off. He's already dropped his turret and doesn't have a rocket, so won't be wanted to take any engagements just for now. Razy needs to maintain a strong position on this high ground, but Rafa, unfazed by where Razy is, actually wants to go on the aggressive, knowing that Razy doesn't have anything to work with except a rocket, and Rafa comes out on top to take our first frag of this game four. You know, that was such a nice rocket coming out from Razy. I thought he was going to get the follow-up to that, and it may not matter. We do have a, tra a traded frag situation here, so it means like we just reset Rafa up by I won, but uh, both players kind of starting. No stack. We did see Rafa grab that mega health. Now making his way over. I think he's going to try to slow it down a little bit. That that opening minute was chaotic, no doubt. It was, and it shows the thought process of Rafa. And in a normal player's head, in my head, he shouldn't really be pro progressing onto the high ground. Razy had position. He had the rockets, but Rafa reading the situation, knowing he could go through quickly, get it to a mid range, and use that lightning gun. Perfect decision making from Rafa. He also has now position on the Mega, and that is a very clean frag. You know, we asked Rafa earlier in an interview uh, in regards to, hey, when you're up two maps, does that change, right, the way that you might approach it another map? And and he said, absolutely, right? I might take a couple risks that I wouldn't have taken otherwise. Sure, I could yeah. be aggressive, and, and, and that might work out to my advantage. And I think, to your point, this is exactly what we're seeing. Like, there's got to be some level of comfort that that Rafa is carrying alongside him that says, you know what, I, I can I could play a little bit aggressive. Maybe I, I'm going 
gonna go uh, out of my way in ways that I would normally, uh, you know, because he's got that lead and he's got that cushion to be able to do so. Yep, and you can see already Crazy getting bullied around the map. Rafa has now taken a full rotation of items, not just the high, not just the heavy and the mega, but also the lights. And Ra Razy has nothing to work with. He's waiting out on this mega, but Rafa doesn't spot his opponent around the corner. The beaker comes out, but he doesn't really do a lot. Razy is hurting. Razy will retreat. But Rafa once again has a full lockdown. He'll go pick up this light. He knows when it's taken because he took it. And he'll also then double back to try and deal some damage and pick up the other light. And at the moment, Razy needs to break this lockdown. Yeah, yeah, he does, and I, you know, I'm be, I'm gonna be biased here, right? I want to see Razy get the frag. I want to see him with a little bit of control, and what that does to Rafa in terms of like how he's gonna change up his play as well. But Razy just having a hard time, even getting his foot in the door, to be honest. And uh, you know, I, I, well, we're gonna have to see what happens. Oh, comes around the corner. Oh, a little. He's like, and and Razy, I learned that from you. Shotgun blast right around the corner. Ouch. And this this is the hardest moment of a match. It's such a feels bad man when you have nothing to work with. You can see Razy, he doesn't know when these items spawn. As soon as you clock on to the fact of when these item timings are, you then need to play a very difficult game to cut off your opponent. You need to block their route. You need to try and delay them so you can fall back on one of these items. But Razy hasn't taken a single item for over two minutes. Heavy, mega, or light. So he's in a very precarious situation. He needs to spam more. He needs to try and use the machine gun more to chip away at Rafa to try and delay Rafa's advances. But he cannot do that. Yeah, I mean, he's he's hung out on that middle bridge quite a bit. We are going to have Peeker come out, and that is going to be a huge cue for Rafa to just say, well, I can just ignore that. And and take you out and, and he does make it six to one i was gonna say you know hanging out in that that middle area uh even even the times where he thought oh i think rafa is over here rafa just sort of had a beat on it. like he hasn't really had the opportunity to get that chip damage off uh much against rafa you can see rafa just scudding around the outskirts of the map spamming through the doorway He's prepared for it, and he's ready to take that engagement because he's the one with the stack. He's also caught Razy through that choke point. Razy drops onto a rocket. He might get away, but at what cost as he scudders away with not a lot to work with? The Mega's up soon, but he can't contest, surely. Yeah, I, I don't see any way that he could have. I mean, he could have, but it just could have been another frag, and that's not what he's trying to do here. Peeker comes out yet again. That actually gives away his uh, position. No real damage done there. And uh, once again, like that feeling of being trapped. I, I, I feel trapped watching Rafa constantly keeping Razy in these sort of contained in these sections of the map. There is an opportunity now as Razy's done enough to suppress Rafa's stack and the Mega's up. Razy's not in position though. He's missed out on a huge opportunity as Rafa's stopped him in his tracks. And Razy once again is back to square one. And the chase is on for Rafa, Razy down to just below 50 health, so he's got to be very, very careful here. And Rafa's going to be on the hunt now. Shotgun out, just pegs it with a couple of pellets right there, nothing too major. But, I mean, like, where does Razy go, right? Rafa looks to be like he is uh, holding on to not only a turret, but also a crystal ball. And this is... A, the problem of playing Rafa, and B, the problem of playing on Corrupted Keep. It's it's a brutal map. There's no railgun to fall back on, so it's all about positioning, it's all about strategy, and when your opponent is playing as perfectly as Rafa and cycling everything on the map, you have to ask yourself, what do I do? And sometimes there is no answer. That's a scary place to be. It is. And then, that's a, that's a sad, the sad thing is, sometimes it comes down to a mistake or crazy shots, and that one, one way or another, neither one of those factors is happening. Eight to one, four minutes remaining. Is it possible? Sure, it could be. Is it going to be hard as hell? A hundred percent. You know, I would never count out someone like Crazy. There's still a uh, possibility here, but uh, again, like it, it would be uh, the most incredible come back but uh you know he, he's keeping at it uh, again in the heavy room uh seeing a lot of great shotgun usage coming out from rafa as well wow. and uh i mean he's just running a clinic right wow. now i i can't remember we the last time we saw rafa below 100 effective health and armor it's just been a masterclass of how to play and this is against one of the most mechanically gifted skilled players in the game i mean we do see it now 
but it's right before a light armor, it's right before the health, and it's right before the heavy, so very quickly he'll be back up to cycling stack. And that's got to be frustrating too, because the moment that he does, right, he he's like, all right, I have an opportunity, came around the corner, shot the shotgun. Unfortunately, Rafa was right there with the exact same answer as he had, and, uh, uh, you know, that, that's got to feel uh, just really constricting, really frustrating. Although well, Razy has constructed oh. opportunity here, maybe to get a frag. He needs to find Rafa, and it is still possible. It is a long road, and for him to win, he will need to play as perfectly as Rafa. Rafa's taking this engagement down here on the low ground. The Pika comes out, but Rafa has the answers. One of the bonuses of picking Strog and Pika is that Pika, because you don't have that railgun to take out that Pika. No. What Rafa's done is to switch to the shotgun and blast out the sky, so it's been literally ineffective. And here we go, he's trying to bring it back, but once again, he comes off the, that kill pretty clean. No. But Rafa was doing such a great job with his side of the chip damage that, you know, it forced Razy to, to back off. And it's now 12 to 2, 10 frags. We're getting scary, scary yeah. um, here as we're about to hit the two minute warning. And the way Rafa played that engagement was how Razy should have played it five minutes ago. He took a strong position over by the heavy. He had a get out and escape option. He did damage to Razy, and that delayed Razy's pickup of the next item because he had to go pick up health. And it does look like now we're approaching the territory of no return for Razy, if I'm honest with you. Yeah, and uh, I mean, just, it, it's been incredible to watch these players all weekend long. And just to see the individual skill that comes out in every single game, you know, it seems crazy to think that two days ago we were like, yeah, you know, this wasn't necessarily the Rafa that we would expect to be able to win a championship, but then it, for him to just be able to turn it on the way he did. And rightfully so, like, Razy has done absolutely the same. and. You know, you've heard the term any given Sunday, and, and when it comes down to that, it's also any given Quake match, right? <laughs> Two incredible players, but uh, Rafa is coming out as the better Quake champion today. On that point, I would love to ask you a question, Wait. Yes. You have obviously been a part of some of the greatest finals we've ever seen and, and witnessed many, many great players. How does this champion in Rafa, which will be our champion in 40 seconds, stack up against those you've witnessed before? I mean, you know, Rafa has clearly earned his spot as one of the champion eras. You know, if you think about the Thresh, if you think about Fatality, if you think about Zero Four, you think about Rafa. I mean, certainly there's many other players that have been champions as well, but with the level of consistency and, and with almost an air of fear that they bring to it, like Rafa has solidified that. Now, with that being said, and me not being surprised that we're, we're seeing this in the last 10 seconds, Seconds. What I want to say to you is like, think about if Razy continues to gather this experience, continues to play as well he's been, been, been playing against these great players, right? You're talking about a few years of experience versus 10 plus years of experience. And that in and of itself should be impressive to everyone who is watching. So is, is Rafa the champion uh, that the Quake World Championships deserve? A hundred percent. He has worked so hard, especially this year. Um, he's gone through some rough, rough life. And for him to still pick himself up and to show himself as the Quake World Champion, that is damn impressive. Take your hat off to this man. He has put forward some of the best performances we have ever seen. Stage two finals was perhaps the best Quake land of all time, and he will be taking home this belt as our two-stage champion. Congratulations, Rafa. Absolutely uh, amazing. And, uh, you know, as you mentioned, going to be able to put that belt uh, around his waist. His name's on it once. It's going to be on there a second time. And, uh, you know, he did win the Stage 2 Finals. And this whole season, just kind of as a wrap, Kilson wins the kickoff. Cooler wins Stage 1. Rafa with Stage 2. Um, and then, of course, Kilson coming back with third. But Rafa comes back and... Uh, you know, I'm again, I'm, I'm not surprised. And I certainly as not only someone from N.A. proud to say that, that, you know, this is one of the few games that we managed to do well in. So good job, Rafa, keeping uh, keeping N.A. esports alive.